Hello my viewers, welcome back to another Hexmanic Advanced Tutorial. This is basic number 2, Pokédex Editing. This is actually a continuation off of an existing tutorial written by Amaya Sora. I'll have it linked in the description. What it talks about is adding more Pokémon to the regional Pokédex, using the Pokédex reorder utilities, and guidelines for creating a pool of Pokémon for the player to catch and battle with. I recommend reading this tutorial in addition to watching this video. One thing this page does not cover, which the video will cover, is editing Pokédex entries, which isn't exactly a straightforward process. More specifically, this video will cover the location of the Pokédex table, where all of our edits will take place. Next, we will cover a strategy to find a Pokémon's Pokédex entry. Afterwards, we will actually edit the Pokédex descriptions for a given Pokémon, and there are other things you can also edit about a Pokémon's Pokédex entry, and I will go over them too. When ROM hacking, make sure you are using the latest version of Hexmanic Advance so that you don't run into issues that have already been fixed. What I'm going to do is navigate back to Hexmanic Advance's homepage on GitHub from this tutorial page. On the right sidebar, you'll see a link to the releases page which will also be in the description. Click it and you'll see the latest public release on top. You'll want to download one of these three things. If you have a 32-bit operating system, get the x86 version. Additionally, you'll need .NET 6 desktop runtime in order for Hexmanic Advance to boot up. I'll have this site in the description as well. Scroll down to where you see desktop runtime and download one of these two installers based on your operating system. The final step is to run the installer. Let's begin the tutorial. We will start with finding the table where all of the magic will take place. What we need is an ability to get to this table. If I click this house button or edit then go to, you'll notice the go to or home menu pop up. You are not going to see a Pokedex button and that's totally okay. We will just have to filter our results by typing Pokedex in this text box. You don't need an acute on the E. The first button you will need to click is data and then you'll see the button for the Pokedex. Now the last button to click to get to the table is actually stats. So we click that button. And now you'll see all of the information for every Pokédex entry, and it's organized like a spreadsheet. You can scroll to the right to see more information that you can edit, such as heights, weights, and various offset values. Note that instead of Pokémon names, their Pokédex species names are used to differentiate instead, and the metric system is used for heights and weights internally. I'm going to move to an already edited ROM to make this segment make more sense. When you work on your hack, you should make backups every now and then, because you might unknowingly do something to corrupt your ROM or some parts of your ROM that are pretty valuable, and you wouldn't want to lose days or weeks worth of progress. So one thing you can do in HMA is click File, then click Export Backup, and you'll be given a prompt that asks you about your most recent change. And to the prompt, click OK, and now a backup of your ROM and metadata will be created. To locate your newly created backup, open File Explorer to the folder that contains the ROM you are editing. And what? How did vbindiff get over there? Anyways, go to the Backups folder, and you will see a fresh copy of your ROM and your TomL file that you can fall back on if you get into a precarious situation. The next thing we need is a surefire way to locate a Pokémon's Pokédex entry, a way that does not require a lot of memorization. So just like before, on the hex content panel, which is on the right, you'll see words slash phrases such as seed, lizard, flame, and tiny turtle. Not all Pokédex entries reference the Pokémon name, though the one that I have selected right now does, which is pretty lucky. Furthermore, if you already used Hexmanic Advance to reorder the dexes, or you replaced existing Pokémon with different ones, it will be very beneficial to employ the process that I will outline in this objective. If you click Reorder National Dex and then the Run button, you'll see all the Pokémon organized based on the Pokédex data, and this will work if the Pokédex was already reordered. Anyways, you can see on the first three boxes, Bulbasaur, Ibisaur, and Venusaur. They correspond to all three seed entries within index numbers 1, 2, and 3. In other words, they are the first three entries in the Pokédex that are not unknown. You can also see Venusaur's name here, so the entries do, in fact, line up. For my example, I'm going to scroll all the way down to Prim. When recording this, I did not know off the top of my head which Pokemon this was referencing, and the entry data does not make it clear. 
As you see where my mouse is, however, you see the number 301. This is this Pokemon's national Pokedex number, and it's also index number 301 in the table. We can use this information in the other tab. So in the national dex visual, you can see all of the Pokemon. The first thing to do is count the number of Pokemon there are in a row. In my case, there are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 of them per row. The exact number might be different for you, and that's okay. The index I'm looking for is 301, so we need to do some division. Remember, we want to find which Pokemon has a national dex number of 301 in this particular ROM hack. We can calculate the number of rows to go down in this table of Pokemon sprites by dividing the target index by the number of columns. For example, the Pokemon's Pokedex entry is at index 301, and we divide by the row length we found, which was 18, and we get the answer 16.72. This means that we need to go down 16 rows, and we need to advance a couple of spaces to the right to land at the right Pokemon. If I got a perfect integer like 16, then my Pokemon would be at the last sprite in the 16th row in that case. First, I'm going to count down 16 rows, and you can see me count them all on the top right of the screen. Be sure not to lose your spot when going down. For me, I landed on Vicaroth for the last entry of the 16th row. I'm now going to do a little bit more math to find the exact spot. So I subtract the number of rows from the quotient that we got earlier to get the remainder. On screen, you can see the difference for our example, which basically removes everything before the decimal point. Lastly, to calculate the number of spaces, you take the remainder and multiply by the number of rows. In our case, it's 13. So I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And apparently this one was Delcaddy. And you can see Sableye to the right. We can conclude that this Pokedex entry belongs to Delcaddy without it explicitly telling us. I can back this up by clicking the next entry, index number 302, and you can see Sableye right there. So the strategy of determining the number of Pokemon pictures per row, finding the number of rows to go down, and doing two calculations to find the number of spaces to go to the right will help you match the ambiguous Pokedex entry to the actual Pokemon. Doing the math might be tedious, but if you do this often, you will build the skill up and you'll be able to do it efficiently. Remember to make backups of your ROM so you don't get punished for making mistakes. If you want to find a Pokedex entry based on a Pokemon's national Pokedex number, then you pretty much do the same math, but do the steps in the reverse order. You would still need to count the length of a row, the number of rows, and the number of columns you move to the right, and all of that stuff. Now that we can locate a Pokemon based on its Pokedex entry, we can now make edits to that Pokemon's Pokedex description. So I opened up a Ruby ROM, and I'm basically going to replace Emerald Delcaddy description with Ruby's Delcaddy description for the most part. You can see it in one text box in Emerald, whereas in Ruby, Sapphire, Fire Red, and Leaf Green, it's in two text boxes. I'm basically going to copy and paste the description from Ruby, but I'll have to make some edits because Pokedex descriptions in Emerald can only be four pages long. Since HMA is not showing a wide enough text box, I'm going to double click the pointer to the text so that you can see a wider text box. I'm going to do the same in Ruby. So there, I head over to the Description 1 column, and I double-click the pointer that corresponds with Delcaddy's entry. Then I will select all of the text, right-click, click Copy, return to the Emerald ROM, select all of the text, and click Paste. Then I will go back to the previous screen in Ruby, head over to the Description 2 column, and double-click the next pointer, and do the same thing as last time. Now that I pasted the second half of the Pokedex entry, You'll instantly see that some data got moved to free space, along with an alert. No need to worry about that. Hexmanic Advance will move data for you once it becomes too big to fit in its original location. So now here we have a problem here. Right now this block of text is 6 lines long and we need to bring it down to 4 to fit in Emerald's allotted space. So I'll have to experiment with the text by removing a couple of words or paraphrasing. Remember, you have backups of your ROM if you're not happy with the changes that you made. So the first thing I'm going to do is paraphrase the selected phrase so it says what it wants. As for whether or not this text will overflow in-game, you can test that in-game when you're done. I just eyeball it and use existing lines of text as a rough reference. Another edit I'm going to make is decapitalizing the word Pokemon by replacing all of the capital letters with lowercase letters but keeping the capital P. 
Next, I'm going to remove these few words and put the fifth line of text in the same row as the fourth line. I think this word completely is going to make the fourth line too long, so I'm going to remove it and I think we'll be good. Okay, this last part is really, really important. In this current form, all of this text will not show up properly, for a highly technical reason. So what we need to do is for every line except the first and the last one, so these two in the middle, is to put a backslash n, so that all of the text will display correctly. So for now, we are done in Emerald, so we can save our changes. In Ruby, I'm going to make some different edits. So I will go back to see both text boxes at the same time. Across both, I'll replace each line with sample text line in the number. After the first line, I do not need a backslash n token, but after the second line of text, I will. And then for the line that says sample text line 3, I do not need a backslash n. For the second text box, I'm going to copy and paste the first text box's content and change the numbers. It is now time to save changes and load our ROMs in an emulator. If you used File Explorer to associate GBA files with an emulator, you can click the green play button with an HMA, and your game will boot up in that emulator. So in the Emerald ROM, I'm going to load the Pokédex and scroll down until I see Delcaddy. I forgot to enable the National Dex, so you're going to see their Regional Dex number of 62 instead. So as you can see right here, I actually kind of lucked out. The text fits beautifully, and it conveys the same idea as Pokemon Ruby's Pokedex entry for Delcaddy. I'm satisfied with how this turned out, but if your Pokedex entries look cut off, or there's something about the text that just doesn't look right to you, you can keep making edits and reload your ROM until they're perfect. You can also see the word Prim Pokemon right over here. Meanwhile, in Pokemon Ruby, the results surprised me as all three lines in each page are pushed as far to the left as possible. I was expecting them to be in the center, to demonstrate what would happen if you didn't have a lot of text on every line. In Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald, this is what it would look like if your longest line of text filled behind a lot of space. A more accurate way to describe the text would be if all of the lines were pushed to the left, but the imaginary text box was centered on the screen. You're also limited to one page of three lines of text in Fire Red and Leaf Green. You might need to reword some of your Pokédex entries so that they look nice after taking into account how text is formatted in the game's Pokédexes. In addition to changing Pokédex entries, you can also change the species names of Pokémon. For instance, I can edit the word flame in the spreadsheet, or I can edit it in the table panel, which is on the left. I decided to change flame to flame body. Unfortunately, you are limited to 11 characters. Like with the Pokédex entries, double check to make sure you're editing the one that corresponds to the right Pokémon. I reloaded the game again, and here's the new change. One more thing to point out in Fire Red and Leaf Green 1.0, as opposed to 1.1, which is less universally supported is that you can't have spaces in species names. If I scroll up to Squirtle's entry, you will see that it's a tiny Pokemon as opposed to a tiny turtle Pokemon. The older versions only show the first word. You'll need to be creative to work around this glitch. If you want to see other ways we can edit Pokedex entries, keep watching! I will now demonstrate editing heights, weights, offsets, and scales in HMA. So on the table tool where my mouse cursor is, there are a couple of other fields I did not touch earlier. And if you're replacing existing Pokemon with new ones, it might be helpful to update these statistics as well. You can also see the information laid out in a spreadsheet. So in the Pokemon games, heights are stored in decimeters. In other words, the number of centimeters divided by 10. So in this case, Poochyana is 5 decimeters tall, and thus 50 centimeters tall. So let's put a number like 20. HMA will automatically convert this height value to a height in inches. And you're seeing 78.74 inches, which will round up to 79. To clarify, it will round to the nearest whole number. By contrast, the weight field is measured in hectograms. 1 kilogram is 10 hectograms. Think of this field as the number of kilograms times 10. So let's say I want Puchiana to weigh 120 pounds. I'm going to start with a ballpark estimate of 600 hectograms, which gives me 132 pounds. Let's decrease this number bit by bit to get closer. How about 580? 
Still too heavy. How about 550? 121 and a quarter is pretty close. Oops, too far. 54 kilograms is 119 pounds. Let's go for the middle ground. 545 hectograms. The weight is now 120.14 pounds. I picked a really good number for this example, didn't I? If I go down by 1, it will actually give me a number that won't round to 120. So I have to accept that some numbers can't be hit exactly. It's a bummer, but it's not too big of a deal. Let's save changes and reload the ROM. Here's Pucciana's entry. You can see the height is 6 feet 7 inches, which is the same as 79 inches, and the weight is shown as 120.1 pounds. Apart from this mathematical edge case, the weight will always round to the nearest tenth, whereas in HMA it rounds to the nearest hundredth. I'll pick a different Pokemon to configure the other four values. For the rest of this video, I'm going to edit Grovile's information. You can see that it's 9 decimeters tall and it weighs 216 hectograms. And you can see the corresponding conversions here. I'm going to double its height so that it becomes 71 inches tall, and I'll make it weigh 1.5 times more for a total of 71.4 pounds. By the way, both things being about 71 is a coincidence. These four values make up the side-by-side -side comparison between this Pokemon and the trainer. 256 is the default trainer scale, and Pokemon scale is usually some number that's three digits long. For both fields, the larger the number, the smaller the image. One thing I can do to update the side-by-side -side comparison is cut this Pokemon scale value in half so that it's 180 instead. It will make the Grovile silhouette larger than the trainer. Alternatively, I can keep the Pokemon scale value at 360 and change the trainer scale value to 512. To maintain the same proportion, I'll bait the trainer sprite literally appearing smaller. I made a simple change by changing most of the values by a factor of 2, but if you have very specific heights and weights, you're going to have to bust out a calculator to get the Pokemon slash trainer proportion correct. I personally wouldn't go out of my way to make sure that the exact Pokemon scale and trainer scale values match the new height and weight and all of that. The precision you want to go for is entirely up to you. Both the Pokemon and trainer offset values are basically Y coordinates. And increasing one offset causes the corresponding sprite to go down. The higher this value, the more pushed down the sprite will be. A lot of them are zero or some number close to it. And you'll see some numbers that are astronomically large, but those are negative numbers actually. I save changes once more and I reloaded the game. You can see the new height and weight values, and if I head over to size, you can see the results. May is a lot shorter than normal, and the sprites are not centered on the screen properly. I'll show you a comparison of what the size comparison normally looks like when viewing Grovile's Pokédex entry. It's on Sapphire, and I was playing as Brandon in this file, but there are no relevant differences. And that's everything you need to know about editing data in the Pokédex table. You have made it to the end of the video. You have learned a lot about editing Pokédex entries, including text descriptions and Pokémon sizes. As a reminder, this supplements Amayasaurus' existing tutorial on editing the Pokédex, which I have on screen right now, and I recommend reading through the wiki page if you didn't already. I hope you take a look at the other tutorials on my channel and in HMA's GitHub repository. There are quite a lot that you can make use of. If you ever find a bug with the software or the software crashes, join the Discord server and post it in the HMA Bug Reports channel. All of the relevant links will be in the description. This is Starstruck Shiny, and have a good one!